This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Kerry King joins us. Of course, you know him as one of the founders of perhaps one of, if not the most influential metal band, Slayer. Uh, they have won multiple Grammys. And now, Kerry has a solo album called From Hell I Rise. Call the info at kerrykingofficial.com. Uh, Kerry, first, uh, you just played the uh, Welcome to Rockville Festival, I believe, in Florida last week. How did it go with this new band unit you put together? I mean, you know these guys for a while, obviously. Uh, and if you hung around the festival a bit, uh, what bands were you able to check out that uh, you liked? You know, believe it or not, I couldn't check out anything. Um, and people probably listen to that and say, well, how is that possible? Because, you know, I'm doing a Yeager sign and I'm doing press and press pants. Um I heard Judas Priest from afar, but I didn't get to go out and see him. I was warming up then, and um, our show, it was great. You know, it was our second show, and, you know, everybody's getting used to the vibe of each other and, and figuring out when to cross stage and when not to cross stage. So um, it is a learning process, but we're learning quick. Um, and the new band has uh, Paul Bostoff on drums and Phil Demel on guitar. Slayer fans obviously recognize those names, but tell us about Mark on vocals and Kyle on bass. Marco Segata came from Death Angel. He's the only one that wasn't out of work. He actually put his name in the hat wanting to do it, but all my other guys, <laughs> including myself, were you know out of work musicians. Kyle was most recently in Hell Yeah. And I met him on the um, Mayhem tour in 2015, and we became big friends and, you know, exchanged numbers, not thinking I was ever going to need another bass player. But, you know, when that time in my life came up, I hit him up. He said, yeah, so I didn't have to look beyond my number one on anybody, which was super cool. Totally cool. There are 13 songs on this album, Kerry. Where uh, Were these songs hanging around for a long time, or were they brand new ideas right, you know, as you went into record? You know, a little bit of both. Um, the second single residue the body of that song has been done since Paul was in the band the last time um, I just never found things to make it a complete song I knew I liked it and I knew I wanted to finish it but you know I don't push things like that I I wait till the riff tells me hey I'm the opener for this other song over here you should put us together um, so I got the intro I got the outro got the mid part of the song and it became a song but that song's probably at least 20 years old um, wow. The body of it. There's definitely some Repentless, a um, couple songs from Repentless on here. There's going to be like three or four songs from Repentless on the next record. Um, there's definitely stuff I've written since 2020, all kinds of stuff. So it's all over the map historically. Uh, you know, I've only heard two of the songs on the new album, Residue. Uh, I think you shot a video for that one, and Idle Hands, and, and they are yep. both just face melters. Uh, I know you've only done a few shows so far with the new material. Do your fans already know these songs, and do they immediately start moshing, or is it a sort of a, a slower process? You know, I think they start moshing right in the beginning, just because even though... It, it Reggie's the first show in Chicago. Only only people knew those two songs, but it's such a familiar sound. Even though they don't know how the song goes, you know, it just instantly started moshing. Then it became more of a, you know, let's see what these guys are about because we can only do that for so long without knowing how the song goes. So I usually put mid set um, idle hands and residue so people can perk up because they should know those two. And they did. They they go like they cheered and you know continued their party but um you know it's 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 very hard our first three shows we're playing without anybody knowing anything but two songs except now everything's on youtube so i expect by day after tomorrow it'll be a, a bit of a different story and people will know more of the stuff uh Kerry king is with us his new band uh, uh from uh, his new album from hell i rise of course you know Kerry from slayer uh for all these years uh Kerry, this is an interesting question because i'm a new yorker and you just mentioned before that you are in new york city um we new yorkers don't hear that a lot usually it's the opposite new yorkers moving out west uh so why new york city tell us about that Oh, my wife is from here. That <laughs> so helps. Her, yeah, that helps. <laughs> yeah, after her 20-year West Coast exile, we came back. You know, it's time for me to say, okay, you know, it's time we can do this. So, you know, we looked around, found a cool spot, and here we are. Do you remember the first time you ever played New York City? And if so, where was that? I don't. 
Um, I remember a lot of the Lemoore shows in Brooklyn. Um, I know those are very early, but I can't remember if that was the first actual New York City gig. Uh, I want to go Maybe back and on New York City, yeah. technically, but. I want to go back in time a little bit here, Kerry. Do you remember the first time you learned your first song on guitar? And if so, what song was it? Um, it probably would have been something like Cat Scratch Fever. Something, you know, certainly not remedial, but certainly not hard. You know, something something you can have some success if you're trying it and not get discouraged and say, hell with this guitar, man, I can't do this. So I'm going to say something like Cat Scratch Fever. You know, I don't remember exactly, but that was definitely in the repertoire. Uh, did the heavens part? Did you hear the angels sing when you finally got the uh, the right chorus and the right notes? No. You know, it took probably, you know, playing in the, uh, my second guitar teacher was grooming me to take the place of his rhythm guitar player. I knew that because he was teaching me all the songs they play. Um, so I did that. <clears throat> I was playing clubs at 16, fake IDs and everything. Not so I could drink, just so I could get in. And, um, you know, that ran its course. Tom was in that band. So when I came across Jeff, I said, hey, I know this singer. And we got together with Tom. And Dave kind of found me. He lived down the street from me. So we just started playing together. And, um, you know, he went on for 40-something years. <laughs> Well, congratulations on that, and I have a full disclosure for you. I've only seen Slayer once in my life, and guess what show it was? It was in New York City. No idea. Theater at Madison Square Garden, 1988. Oh, cool. We're dancing. <laughs> what a show. Um, yeah, they put up all the seats. Exactly. I remember the cushions flying, and oh, God, it was so great. Um can you just explain to us, because it's different for other bands, but, you know, Slayer does this farewell tour, yet they reunite later, including some festival dates in September of this year, which is totally fine, of course. Slayer fans love it, but but how does this happen, you know, you know, from your perspective? I'll put it in the perspective everybody can understand. You know, we've been turning down offers since <clears throat> beginning of 2020, you know, pandemic at all. Um, you know, and then it started getting near five-year anniversary of us stopping playing so i'm like you know what there's a three-show package i think it would be fun to do it's kind of a five-year anniversary of our last tour we're never going to tour again it ain't going to happen <clears throat> we're never going to record again that's not going to happen either but you know to do commemorative shows i think that's kind of fun you know i don't have to be married to it for a long time kids don't have to worry about it coming around on tour because we said we wouldn't you know it's not not a whole lot of weird diabolical shit going on here i think you know people just gotta say hey it's an anniversary celebration shows that's gonna be the end of it um will there be a proper new york city show with the band from the uh from hell i rise tour will you do a, a show with this with this new group of guys absolutely dude i um i was kind of surprised when the macedon on the god tour <clears throat> wasn't hitting new york city but i figured they've probably both been here and played it out so this being my first run through on the album, I guarantee you it'll be a New York City show. I'm guessing it's probably not going to be a last or New Year's though. Got it, got it. Um, and you have met some of the greatest stars of all time, uh, played on stage, recorded with some of them, played all over the world. So my question is, um, what are your what are your top two moments in your life when people ask you, you know, what are the two of the perhaps coolest moments in this life that you have chosen? Well, I'm going to pick... You know, I'll probably come back and pick a concert, but my first one from around 2006 or seven, I'm not really sure when it was, but I was a presenter at the uh, Classic Rock Awards and I think it was London. Um, and I was presenting to Tony Iommi, who was basically the last person on the planet I couldn't speak to because I was such a super fan. So <clears throat> I get up, I start talking on the mic. I'm, I'm really nervous because I'm out of my element. You know, I can talk in front of, any of my peers but I mean there's huge rock bands there ACDC Aerosmith Def Leppard you know all the Sabbath guys so a little bit of nervous you know, whack the mic like a like I've never been on the mic before <laughs> um, I presented to Tony we got our picture taken together and, and I finally felt like I had got over the mountain and me and Tony were bros so I can talk to Tony I owe me now so that's cool whenever I play with Black Sabbath if that ever happens again that's a that's a fantastic 
That's a fantastic moment. Carrie King is with us uh, from the new, the new album from uh, his new band, From Hell I Rise. Um, and Carrie, uh, for all the fans uh, and everybody in Q1043 in New York City and the tri-state area and across the world, uh, we thank you so much for the amazing music uh, all of these years. And uh, we look forward to a proper New York City show or a tri-state area show with this new band, um, Get all the info at Carrie King Official Music. Yeah, is that, is that what it is? Yeah, Carrie King Official dot com. Uh, Carrie, thank you so much, man, and uh, I look forward to seeing you real soon. Absolutely, I guarantee I will be here. This is Out of the Box with your host Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box Sunday nights at nine on Q one hundred four three.